Hey guys, Stock Saturday, and it's a little bit of a red week for me uh, after a sort of fairly green week uh, last week. Uh, this is sort of largely due to uh, a little bit of crypto and gold, although uh, also seeing um, the AI sort of related stocks coming down a little. Uh, TSMC holding up a little bit better than Broadcom. Uh, Broadcom was sort of at the 1800s uh, i think pushing 1900s at one point it's now 1605 uh, and stellantis has sort of come off a little bit um but nothing too much uh, about four uh, percent i have taken the opportunity to add a reasonable amount of money uh, which i will come to a little later on uh, just comparing to the s p then so i'm down four percent the s p is almost entirely flat 0.02 percent up in the last five days it's all been a little bit up and down had a spike up on friday and come back down to earth uh, but the nasdaq is slightly better ever so slightly uh, 0.18 percent up so very very flat although it's sort of you could say just on a little uh, consolidation but we'll have to see not too much in the way of uh, earnings and news this week. So just looking at some more sort of uh, bits and pieces. Um, KGHM's production numbers for May. It's only one month, but uh, they give you the uh, May numbers. And copper uh, looking up, 61,900 tonnes. So that's pretty good. Uh, silver slightly down, 119 tonnes from 123. But... Yeah, looking at sort of more of their average uh, level production. The sort of going for, um, you know, around about six to 700,000 uh, tonnes of copper per year. Uh, they've done 300 in five months, so that's pretty good. And um, sort of hopefully over 1,000 tonnes of uh, silver. They've done 553 um yeah, so pretty good. We're looking at sort of 50 million ounces is uh, my target. I tend to look at it in ounces. Um, they're the second biggest behind uh, Fresnillo. Clean Spark news as well. Um, they're sort of down a little bit. Uh, not sure whether that's on this news. I think all the miners are sort of down this week with uh, Bitcoin being a little lower. Uh, nothing too much though. But we're sort of waiting for Clean Spark to. Uh, announced something as to what they were going to do with all their miners because they've largely just uh, placed the orders for the rigs themselves and uh, didn't really have sort of anywhere to put them so it's looking like their previous acquisition and uh, certainly this one more so uh, will be going towards that um, they have acquired grid infrastructure um, based on an enterprise value of 155 million dollars um, they have expansion plans of over 400 megawatts in Tennessee. So they're again going sort of not uh, towards the Texas and uh, places like that that a lot of other miners are going for. They're sort of going for smaller, uh, smaller states, smaller cities. And yeah, this is looking like I need to do a little bit more reading up on uh, grids because there isn't a huge amount of info certainly in here or even on grids. Uh, reports that I could find but it's looking like they were sort of a struggling miner um, similar sort of to situation to what um, Argo blockchain essentially got themselves into uh, sort of took on a fair bit of debt uh, haven't really updated their uh, their rigs and so they've got sort of a lot of um, data centers with potential to be you know strong miners uh, from what I'm guessing they have some existing facilities that uh, maybe uh, CleanSpark can replace the rigs with their sort of new S21 rigs and they sort of have land and power uh, available at sort of reasonable prices to be able to um, to have new facilities. Um, I would sort of rather um, rather prefer to be buying uh, turnkey operations as they sort of have been buying that you can just put your rig straight in because we're sort of expecting to see... Um, you know crypto bull market by the end of next year so you don't really want to be starting new facilities as sort of their last um last acquisition um we sort of showed a few weeks ago looking like they may have to be building new facilities so yeah you're not really going to get the benefit of uh, the bull market for the full next sort of 18 months if you're just starting to build facilities but yeah 
this is uh, reasonably good news. Um, sort of even more tempted to uh, potentially swap some of this uh, clean spark position out to Riot uh, because it's looking like Riot should be uh, over the um, production X hash of clean spark sort of in the very near future. So considering clean spark still have, I believe, over a billion dollars in uh, market cap uh, over Riot, then that seems a bit much. I think I mentioned before as well, uh, Hive Digital Technologies is sort of a very small miner that I have been looking at. Um, kind of surprised that uh, some of the sort of uh, larger miners don't consider this as uh, an acquisition. Uh, obviously, Riot looking at uh, bit farms, but um, yeah, for sort of 360 million, it was uh, cheaper than that. It's sort of been, you know, even just in the last month, uh, it's been as low as. Uh, uh, what would that be? Sort of 300 million, just under uh, 300 million. And yeah, whether they would accept a, an offer, I don't know. But um, yeah, at sort of 360 million, looking at their uh, their numbers, um, the May 2024 uh, operational update, they mined 119 Bitcoin. So this is post halving, uh, ended May with 5x hash exactly and uh, increased their hodl to 2451 bitcoin so at uh, today's prices that is uh, well is that 60000 admittedly we're expecting it to go higher than that but yeah 147 million in uh, bitcoin on the balance sheet so for a 360 million market cap that's quite a little uh, quite a nice little hodl they are saying uh, as of June the 9th as well, um, increased to 2,468. Uh, on track to reach 5.5x uh, ash uh, with upgrading their uh, existing miners, some of their existing miners to uh, S21s. Uh, they're sort of not really going in for the, you know, massive dilution and uh, massive expansion. Uh, they don't really dilute a whole lot other than stock-based compensation. Uh, so they are just staying at... 5.5x ash or 5x ash currently and um, you know updating so uh, you don't really get that uh, multiple expansion that uh, everyone's going for people just want the biggest x hash number i think and then being at five you know isn't really uh, too popular even though they have sort of a very fairly large hodl position so i'm kind of looking at uh, you know bitcoin increasing uh, this could be a a small miner that does well. Uh, admittedly, I'm not looking too much at buying the stock. I am looking at buying the options because um, they seem quite cheaply uh, cheaply priced. But there is a risk if uh, Hive do get acquired by someone that that option bet could uh, not go very well because I'm looking at potentially uh, a sort of big bull market. Um, I'm buying a ten dollar strike for sort of the end of next year. So. You know, if someone buys them at sort of 100% premium uh, in the next couple of months, you know, buys them at $6 or something or even $7. Obviously, that's not above 10 and you don't really know what happens to the options. They could just uh, get cancelled. So, yeah, stock doubles and I lose everything. But I think if they don't get acquired, uh, that could be a reasonable bet. So we'll see. So we did have one uh, earnings, sort of rather belated uh, processes full year uh, for the year ending 31st of March. Obviously, we're uh, pretty much at the end of Q2 now, at the end of sort of the business days of Q2. So it's a little bit late, but yeah, process. I do mainly obviously focus on 10 cents performance because it is such a, a large part of of the business. But admittedly, they are sort of selling down 10 cent and sort of buying back shares. So that sort of increases your exposure to uh, their other businesses, which you do have to focus on. And they're not looking too bad. Uh, a lot of uh, revenue growth, 19% uh, year on year, where they've sort of had uh, a little bit of a, a slowdown. Um, but yeah, looking pretty good. And so full year 2021, uh, everyone was sort of hoping they were uh, going into profit. They sort of uh, reduced their loss down to uh, 58 million dollars but then it widened sort of very significantly in uh, in the bear market and sort of emerging markets not looking too good but they've now uh, had quite a sudden uh, surprise profit so 38 million um, dollars uh, 
e-commerce trading profit compared to $413 million loss uh, last year. So pretty good. Free cash flow sort of increasing. But uh, I think that is partly due to uh, the 10 cent dividend. I don't think that's from the uh, all from uh, the e-commerce side. Um, as well, sort of a uh, little bit of a breakdown showing uh, strong revenue growth, sort of food delivery, classifieds, and the payments, uh, yeah, payments and fintech uh, calculation is actually wrong there. I don't think it's 38 uh, percent revenue growth. That looks more like 22 percent to me. Um, and yeah, ed tech sort of doing not quite as well. They've had a, a big knock from uh, one of the Indian businesses. Um, and e-tail sort of not doing quite as well either um, but yeah sort of still very much uh, an emerging markets uh, sort of bet um, you know food delivery and sort of education and that sort of thing uh, they have to have a you know a slide on AI of course uh, they're investing in sort of AI startups and that sort of thing you know never know one of these could be sort of a big success um, yeah, so they're noticing, uh, noting that uh, they've had some underperformers, and this is sort of in the education and sort of uh, technology side of education. So Stack Overflow not doing particularly well, getting hammered by uh, ChatGPT really. And this was, uh, uh, I don't know whether it's Bijou, um, the sort of Indian platform. They've written off their entire stake. So I haven't sort of really read into uh, why particularly but i believe it was a two billion dollar stake and yeah they've sort of written off the whole lot so that's not ideal um and then yeah the obviously the 10 cent side is doing reasonably well so that's kind of made up for it and then this is what they are highlighting so selling a little bit of 10 cent to uh, buy back an awful lot of shares uh, they've repurchased 22 percent of the uh, free float um process shares in the last two years so 679 million shares of both companies um the process 20 percent 22 percent and naspers 20 percent so it's all sort of part of the same group and sort of interestingly comparing themselves to um you know other tech firms paypal alibaba and sort of us uh, big tech but uh, you know they aren't doing this from massive cash flows that the big tech lot are doing they're just doing it from selling uh, their stake in 10 cent so yeah unusual to uh, sort of compare them to that and the half yearly breakdown of uh, the e-commerce side does sort of paint uh, an even more rosy picture uh, so you sort of had 157 million loss in uh, second half of 2023 and then so this is uh, fiscal year and then first half of this year was uh, 36 million loss um, and the second half 74 million profit so where they say first profit it's only come in uh, the second half of the year so if uh, this carries on then we should sort of already be at quite a significant uh, profit sort of um, for the last three months so very nice and then highlighting that uh, this profit is largely coming from the food delivery side and classifieds, which is uh, unusual, not where I would have expected. Um, payments and fintech, sort of education, e-tail and others are still sort of losing money, but sort of up from uh, or doing better than doing better than last year. Uh, all of them sort of quite significantly, you know, 50 percent reduction in in loss. So if some of those can go profitable as well, then that would be very bullish. Uh, I think the sort of whole idea that uh, process is basically 10 cent uh, with a knockdown for all of these businesses uh, could start to change. Obviously, if, uh, you know, a lot of these turn profitable and potentially they sort of spin one out or IPO for uh, a reasonable price then you know you would start saying it's process plus all of these uh, other companies rather than sort of a knock for them uh, obviously it's never going to be um, just the sum of all the parts as you sort of get with Berkshire you know if you add every everything up individually it's going to be worth more than the market cap but you get a bit of a discount for being a conglomerate and sort of various tax issues and things 
just highlighting their debt position as well. Very sort of uh, unusual position to be in. Uh, the holding company has $14.6 billion in uh, cash and $15.2 billion of debt at sort of an average cost of 3.1%. Uh, but they can somewhat pay uh, all of this interest, certainly, uh, just from 10 cent dividends. So, you know, 565 million in uh, dividends in uh, full year, fiscal year 2023, uh, 759, and then a uh, billion dollars in uh, dividends just from 10 cent. So, yeah, it's uh, they don't really have to worry about that debt sort of too much, or they don't have to uh, worry about paying the interest from uh, cash flow from their existing companies. They can sort of carry on investing and uh, yeah, trying to find the next 10 cent. Although that's probably never going to happen. So yeah, overall, I still think uh, worth holding. They still have 25% in uh, 10 cent, even though they sort of have been obviously selling that down. And then sort of quite a large uh, portfolio of uh, emerging market e-commerce. So I'm still bullish on uh, emerging markets, um, especially India, although India is where they've had their their knock to the um, to the education one. Um, but yeah, we'll see where they go. So the gold consolidation still continues, um, sort of waiting to uh, deploy some more money. Uh, I've started putting more into the options account and uh, we'll be sort of probably looking to uh, pick up some more uh, Equinox gold, most likely. I haven't really seen uh, another gold company that I was sort of more keen on than them. Uh, sort of kind of waiting for uh, maybe gold to come below the... Uh, $2,300 level, but every time it sort of comes down, it seems to get bought straight back up. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I, don't, I do think it can sort of only only consolidate for so long. You start sort of going into the end of the year, getting uh, rate cuts. And, uh, you know, we've already had one from the EU. Uh, UK didn't want to do it, but, uh, yeah, I think the others will, will follow soon. And uh, gold should start to pick up. Um, but there's always a risk we sort of do get a, a bit of a spike down, but I don't think I want to be sort of waiting for that spike down um, to buy, really. I might just go for it. So as far as economic news goes, uh, it was a fairly quiet week, really. Nothing much on Monday or Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, you had some uh, home sales data from the US. Uh, not particularly good. Uh, new home sales down from last month and sort of worse than expectations. Thursday, you had uh, continuing jobless claims up um, and slightly worse than expectations again. Um, you had the... Uh, GDP figures and all that sort of thing. It's all lagging. It's Q1. Um, and you had pending home sales down uh, a little bit worse than expected. Uh, Friday was sort of the main one. We had the core and uh, headline PCE data. So this is the inflation data that uh, the Fed focus on more so than uh, CPI and even core CPI. Pretty much all as expected, 2.6% uh, on uh, core PCE, down from 28 uh, They do have their sort of end of year forecast, I think, at 27 So they're expecting this to have basically bottomed now. Uh, we'll have to see what we get sort of next few months. But yeah, 2.6. Uh, he did his quote sort of was 26 to 2.7% is a good number to be at. Uh, I still think he was meaning that they're hoping it comes down and it was a good number to be at at the moment. You know, not a, a long term good number to be at. But yeah, that's what everyone took from it. Um, but on the monthly, at least 0.1% um, core PC and 0% on headline. So that's a good number to be at. So portfolio wise, as I say, uh, crypto taking a little bit of a knock and sort of gold and silver, a small knock. Uh, Clean Spark below $16, you know, did drop a little bit, as I say, on this acquisition of uh, Grid, uh, dilution. People may be thinking it's not the best use of the money, but yeah, we'll have to see. I'm sure there's wisdom in that purchase. Um, Kua Mining sort of down a little bit. Equinox 522 and uh, Fortuna still sort of down. Uh, again, sort of dilution to uh, to pay off the debt. I didn't really think it was uh, the best idea, but we'll have to see sort of what uh, what George says about it. Um, 
Interactive Brokers side, KGHM sort of back up at 150. Pretty good. Uh, Pan American still sort of hovering where it was. Um, and then on the option side, so um, spoiler alert for tomorrow, uh, I've sold Cardano entirely. I have to say it was sort of on the on the chop, potentially on the selling pile, and it sort of had a, a little bit of a spike up during um, a little bit of weakness, so sort of divergent strength, really. And, yeah, I haven't really seen a lot uh, positive for Cardano for quite a while. Uh, if you take the sort of fully diluted market cap, it's at uh, $17 billion. So, yeah, I didn't really, uh, can't really get on board with that. And I've sold it, put 4,000 of that into uh, the option side, into interactive brokers. So, yeah, the uh, potential buys of Riot, uh, potentially Hive, Equinox and all them, uh, hopefully could come sort of in the next week or so. Um, but, yeah, we've had sort of a little bit of a drop in um, Hymax. Nothing too much. It's still £20,000 nearly uh, position. So, yeah few weeks ago that was uh, far less than that um Kerr mining at sort of 15,000 come down slightly uh, similar with equinox um clean spark down quite a bit uh, certainly on that news uh, core scientific is still sort of riding high uh, 240 percent in the green um fortuna not really looking to buy sort of anything like uh, fortuna or Kerr mining um but or sort of uh, core scientific as well as i say i think that train has uh, has left and i'll be looking at hive blockchain um 20 end of 2025 or i think it's january 2026 um equinox jan 2026 and uh, yeah possibly riot uh, jan 2026 so potentially we'll see if this 6000 uh, could get spent and i've got sort of quite a bit more to add to it if uh, we get more downside so we'll see uh, leave your thoughts in comments below then and like and subscribe see you soon